So uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about um, uh, a project that I got involved with uh, shortly after I started working for the city of Austin, Texas. Um, <clears throat> and uh, first I would like to introduce you to the mascot of the department I work for. Uh, this is the Love Chicken. Everybody say hello to the Love Chicken. You can say hello, hello. Love Chicken. <laughs> Thank you, excellent. Um, so I work uh, for the Office of Design and Delivery, which is part of uh, the Communications and Technology Management Department for the City of Austin, which is the city's IT department. Um, a couple quick values I'll share about us. So we're very resident-centric. Um, we do uh, what is commonly referred to these days as digital services delivery, um, that we uh, there's two main components uh, of our department. There's a service design lab, uh, which uh, works on different uh, social and governmental issues from a sort of service design perspective. And then uh, there's the actual um, digital services delivery development side of things, which is where I work as a web developer. Um, and uh, I work to support residents, and then I also see my job as a developer is to support the content creators for the city of Austin. Uh, I like to see them smile. Uh, my job is, is mostly uh, to help make sure that they are able to uh, deliver the information that they need to residents that need it. Um, so a couple quick ground rules about the following presentation. Um, a lot of what we'll be talking about tonight is uh, going to consist of uh, my thoughts and perspective having worked on this project. That is not the same as an official recommendation, uh, acknowledgement, or really anything from the Office of Police Oversight, which is who we built this product for, or for the Office of Design and Delivery, where I work, or the city of Austin, where we're under, or really if there's any other institution you could possibly think of that I might be representing right now, the answer is no, I am not representing anybody but myself right now, um, just to be clear. Um, and also, uh, to sort of frame this conversation a bit, um, police accountability is a really complicated and broad topic. Um, I, I, I found this kind of amusing as I was trying to find a quick definition maybe to distill down. Uh, really it's impossible um, to discuss. It's not the subject of this presentation in particular. Um, while I'm definitely interested in having an open dialogue tonight, um, defining these contexts and constraints is probably helpful for figuring out how we can have a productive and useful conversation. Um, if you'd like to know more about police accountability in general, there's lots of ways to do that. I highly recommend getting a degree in political science. Um, <laughs> worked pretty well for me. Uh, so uh, sorry for a little of the bait and switch title. Uh, the talk tonight is, is not simply just about technology and police accountability. It's really about one small element of that. Uh, it's about uh, being able to deliver feedback from residents to the city uh, about a police conduct, and then even more specifically, we're mostly going to be talking about the technology that was used to do that. Um, so, a great question then would be like, what does technology look like in this context? Like, if you're talking about social issues and then technology, they're not always like seen as uh, uh, natively intersecting, if you will. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to give this talk is I think it's a really interesting and great example of how using technology uh, to further social goals uh, can be very effective if those social goals are centered first. So it's not necessarily about the technology. It's not about doing something fancy. There were no self-driving cars involved in the making of this form. Um, and spoiler alert, yes, what this did look like was a form that you can fill out which is a very primary method of, in, of interacting with the government for the citizenry. And I think you could probably talk to a political science professor who would tell you that forms themselves were once a technological innovation in uh, del delivering effective government services. Um, there's a lot that went into this form. We'll demo it later. Um, the path taken to get here had a huge impact on what the end product looked like and how it functioned. And that is one of the things that I'm so passionate about working at this intersection of technology and civic life. Uh, the end result um, may not look as like flashy as a lot of uh, what might be currently trending in the tech industry, especially in the private sector, but the impact is very real. And uh, the results are, are I think, pretty, pretty impressive. Um, 
So first, I'll do a little bit of a quick background on how this forum came to exist, and then we'll spend some time demoing it, and then we'll hopefully have plenty of time for uh, questions and discussion. Um, so a quick little background in general. Um, the, the city of Austin passed a resolution March 22nd of 2018, uh, directed the city manager, which uh, you could think of that as being roughly equivalent to the mayor here in Chicago. Austin does have a mayor, but it's split. We can talk about it later. Anyways, the city ordinance was passed unanimously. Um, the city manager needed to develop an evidence-based uh, approach, uh, exploring best practices regarding uh, police oversight. It's a pretty fancy way of saying that there was a lot of interest uh, at, in the state of Texas and in the city of Austin around issues of police accountability that have been building up, uh, I would say, probably for some time. Again, just my opinion. Um, but that culminated in, in uh, a pretty significant community push, which re resulted in a, a bill getting passed. Uh, as a result of that ordinance being passed, or it's a resolution, rather, um, there was a police oversight advisory working group that basically started looking through best practices uh, across the, the nation, um, looking at how to approach these things. Chicago, for example, the, has a Citizens Police uh, Oversight Council, and that was on the list of uh, uh, agencies that was, that was looked at. Um, and then in the summer of 2018, the Service Design Lab, where I work, began research to answer this question, uh, how might we help the Office of Police Oversight um, make the complaint process more accessible and responsive to public needs. And that also expanded uh, not only to just like complaints about, about police misconduct, but also just communicating feedback in general, uh, the ability to uh, also provide compliments if you had like a good experience with a police officer or if you just had questions that you need to ask the Office of Police Oversight. Um, so that research was conducted, um, led to when it was time to create an end product. Uh, these were kind of the goals that we had in mind. I did my best to kind of make these succinct, and I, I, won't, I won't read them word for word. Um, we basically, uh, the research that was conducted showed that there were a lot of barriers to getting feedback. Um, a lot of that, perhaps not surprisingly, was with people feeling comfortable sharing information. Uh, especially if you've had a negative experience, that's a very traumatic experience. Uh, and there were a lot of barriers uh, to providing that feedback. Um, in the city of Austin, uh, at the time, before this forum existed, the main way that you could file a complaint against the police was you need to go uh, basically fill out an affidavit and have it notarized and delivered in person during business hours. Um, all of which are in and of themselves kind of onerous obstacles to easily providing information. But if you combine that together with uh, sort of handing over that list of requirements to someone who has experienced a potentially negative experience, um, that, not surprisingly, was uh, a pretty top concern from the research that was conducted. So we wanted to be able to remove as many barriers as we could. Um, that also meant that we wanted to make an online intake form that was accessible um, by all different kinds of people. Um, and that also included uh, uh, physical ability as well as language. Um, I think it was a, it's about 20 to 30 percent of people in the city of Austin uh, speak Spanish as a primary language. We launched this form in English and Spanish simultaneously, um, which, as I learned, is not super common even among government agencies. Uh, uh, not nearly as common as you might think. Um, we also wanted to make sure that there was a good feedback loop in place so that individuals who did choose to share their contact information could, could actually check in on the status of their complaint and actually know what happened to it uh, to help ensure that there was like, continued trust in the process. Uh, and um, this last goal, too, was, a, I think, a pretty remarkable uh, and central improvement on the process, which is that you can, uh, you can send in a complaint, a compliment, uh, any sort of feedback. Uh, does, you do not have to personally disclose your information. You can do this anonymously, anonymously uh, in the city of Austin, uh, which is something that is uh, pretty unique. I mean, you can't do that here in Chicago. Um, and uh, as you'll see when we demo the form, we put a lot of work into trying to uh, address all of these goals uh, simultaneously. Uh, OK, so let's look at the form. And we're going to do it live. It's like a little cooking show. We already had the form pulled up here. Um, and just to give a little bit of a full background here, so the, the URL is, uh, 
ATX Police Oversight. Oops, too many T's. I think it's .org. There we go. OK. Um, so you'll see that redirects to a different URL. We can talk about that later. But this basically takes you to a department page for the Office of Police Oversight. It has information about the department. I don't know how scrolling works in Soren's computer. <laughs> <laughs> and right at the top are um, some immediate services. So you can see examples of uh, documents uh, <laughs> on complaints that have already been completed. Um, you can also file a complaint about an Austin police officer or thank an Austin police officer. This will take you to the production version of the form. We're not going to go there, because we don't want to fill out a production version of the form tonight. We're not in Austin. We're not going to give any sort of useful information to the Office of Police Oversight. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is pop this into mobile view. Um, that was one thing that was really important, was having making a mobile-friendly uh, form. Uh, that's the way that most people uh, interact with uh, the city website and other services. Uh, and so you can see here, um, there's a couple different options for filing a complaint. Um, we're most interested in the online version. So up front, it gives you information about what is required, and what information is optional. Um, and that might seem like a very small thing, but there are very few government forms, just kind of speaking in general, that actually tell you ahead of time what you'll actually need. And, what, and more important in this case is what is actually optional. So right out the gate, we're trying to make sure that people feel like comfortable knowing what kind of information uh, needs to be provided. Um, the first, uh, first thing we ask you is what happened. Again, this is a thing that might seem very simple. Uh, but if you were, for instance, would go look at COPA's form, the first thing that the COPA form asks you for is first name, last name, age, race, personal address, et cetera, before you get to any information about what actually happened. So that's the very first thing that we ask. And it is one of the few things that is actually required to fill out the form. And it is an open text field. Uh, so the user can take as much time and space as they need to explain what happened. Uh, the other two things that are very important is the date and time. Uh, and this is information that's required because uh, the Office of Police Oversight, which is a third party, uh, is independent from the police department itself investigates every complaint uh, or every thanks, and they need to know the date and time to be able to investigate it so that they can verify the, the situation. Um, so this can be filled out a variety of different ways. Uh, this is like an area where like, we did a lot of accessibility testing, um, and we have to fill out some information. So we'll just say, uh, we gave a talk. And, um, we can use this calendar function. On a phone, it will actually use like uh, the phone's uh, native mobile input. And this is also something that could be filled out by, by a screen reader. Um, and we'll, we'll put it in a time. Um, you can also put whether or not you received a ticket. This is like something that was feedback that the Office of Police Oversight gave us, uh, that a lot of the complaints that traditionally came in through the office were uh, complaints about tickets. So it's helpful to be able to indicate that. <laughs> um, next, it asks where you were. And again, this is information that's helpful to uh, be able to investigate uh, the situation. Um, this is a fun little uh, widget here. And when I started working on this project, which was in January of last year, um, this was a part that wasn't really fleshed out. It was actually one of the first things I worked on. Um, and we didn't really have a design for it either. We just knew that we somehow needed to collect location information from people. Um, so I did some thinking and thought about any situations I could think about where there are mobile apps where you have to like specify your location. And I was like, I wonder how, I wonder how Uber and Lyft do that. And so I pulled up those apps on my phone and basically just copied the way that they work. Um, so you see here, there's a little pin in the center of the map. Uh, you can type in an address here. Uh, if you just drag on the map, you can just sort of plop down a pin, and it will geocode that location. Um, you, so you can like type in an, a location, and it will uh, zoom to there. And then you can kind of fine tune it along the way. Um, this was kind of an interesting point when we did user testing, because depending on variety of circumstances that mostly seem to be like age and whether or not the person was like desktop versus mobile, their understanding of like how to interact with this was very different. Um, 
but for most of the users that we were targeting, this was like very intuitive and a very like comfortable, safe way to sort of explain like where something happened. Um, incidentally, this entire forum is open source, and this widget itself has actually since been copied by the Austin Transportation Department. So they use it internally on different apps for uh, city employees who need to like uh, put the indicate that a sig traffic signal is out or something like that. So they went ahead and copied this. Um, so. That's fun. Um, and um, you can also provide information uh, if you have like video or records. Uh, this can be uploaded as well. Uh, a lot of effort went into making sure that that was safe and secure, which I'm happy to talk about. Um, then there's information about the officers. So a lot of this stuff is optional. You can see it's not marked as required anymore. Um, but if you do uh, indicate that you have information, it asks you for name, physical description, race. Um, gender, uh, other details like that. Um, you can also add multiple officers. So this is sort of a, a, a form that can, can keep collecting information if you have it. But if, if you don't have it, it doesn't, like prevent, it doesn't present you with that. Uh, so nobody feels like overwhelmed filling out all this information. Uh, similarly, like you can provide additional information about witnesses, um, which is laid out very similarly. Um, and then um, the form will also collect uh, demographic information, and this was something we also put a lot of effort into making sure that people felt comfortable and safe. Uh, we indicate here that it's optional. Um, it isn't personally identifiable information. Uh, please see uh, Soren's talk for uh, indications of the problematicness potentially of asking to collect uh, gender information, but in this case it is it is optional and, and, and is required uh, uh, mostly for feedback purposes. Uh, and if you uh, proceed after that, then you can, uh, at this point, provide your personal contact information if you would like to. So the form is by default anonymous. But if you do indicate that you would like someone to follow up with you, because one of the downsides of filling out the form anonymously is that the Office of Police Officer is not able to follow up with you directly about the status of your complaint if they do not know who you are. Um, so if you would like to follow up, you know, you can indicate there, and then it will require your name, your phone number, and then that's it. Optional email address, no other personally identifiable information. Uh, and then you can also indicate if you need an interpreter. Um, this form, by the way, I mentioned is in English and Spanish. Um, and I'll point out real quick, like one thing that popped up in the middle of us working on this was we did user testing uh, repeatedly. And one of the things came up that we didn't really anticipate, which is that a lot of people wanted to be able to fill out the form uh, in a bilingual capacity. So a lot of times that could look like uh, a son or daughter or, or, uh, or a sibling who speaks English helping their parent or other relative fill out the form for them. And in that case, uh, people wanted the ability to be able to switch between languages as they were filling out the form, which was something that we totally didn't anticipate and uh, weren't able to deliver as, as smoothly as we would have liked. Um, but we do provide the ability to switch between uh, languages as you go throughout the form. So if I'm this far along in the process and I switch to Spanish, um, it does give you the ability to do that. We weren't able to also uh, be able to keep all that data and sort of uh, pass it between forms. Um, we would like to be able to do that in a future version, but it, it at least acknowledges that uh, you, will, you can start over in Spanish, you will lose the information you have entered, uh, and then you, you can start over or you can proceed. So if we were to start over in Spanish, it would take us back to the beginning of the form, uh, and it would go from there. Um, I probably shouldn't have done that. Because <laughs> then we'd have to get all the way back to the submi sub submission process. Um, well, that's what happens when you do it live. So uh, <laughs> let's just see here. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, after you submit the information, it does take you to a review page uh, where you can see all of the responses. Uh, in fact, I will fill that out real quickly. 
Yeah, we, we do you to talk. And oh my gosh. <laughs> so skip through. Left clicks, not right clicks. And oh my gosh. OK. So you're able to review all of your responses before submitting, uh, which is pretty handy. Um, some of the feedback we got was that um, sometimes people start filling out a form, and then the process is easy and intuitive, and so they feel like sharing more. Um, so the ability to do that is still here. Uh, each one of these components, if you need to, you can uh, review the information that was provided, and you can edit it. Um, so if I needed to, say, tweak the location, actually it happened here, I can go ahead and update that in place. Uh, same thing with any of these other fields. If we decide that we actually do want to share information about officers, we can do that. Um, and the nice thing about doing this as sort of a componentized way is there might be future forms that we might use where this might be the form. You know, there, there, it may not be a need to walk everyone through every step, but you could essentially just use this review. Um, so we submit that information, and again, this is part of the trust process. Um, we have received your complaint. Here's information about what happens next. These are things that far too often are missing from government services and are, are, are simple but easy to overlook. Um, and you also receive an email. I didn't provide my email. I forgot to do that. That's what happens when you do it live. But if I, uh, you do get an email confirmation. And it's, again, it's all the information that you provided. Pretty similar to that review page that we looked at. Uh, and that's all the information that you would need to follow up. Uh, if you were to call the Office of Police Oversight to follow up, they would just ask for your name, your information, and then they would let you know uh, the status of that. Um, so the results of this were pretty good. I'm not sure where the presentation went. Is it behind these yes, tabs? It is. OK. There we are. OK. So, so far, the form has been very successful. In terms of data on form submissions, it looks really good. Submissions overall are up from previous years. I do not have exact numbers for you. Sometimes that happens when you work in government, and it's OK. <laughs> but I can tell you that the numbers look really good. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I swear. <laughs> um, and like this is a very complicated, controversial, complex issue. Um, so I am happy to attempt to answer questions along that lines. But just be aware there are things that are easy and things that are hard to talk about. Um, so the form has worked really well. Um, we've, we've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback about it. Uh, submissions are up. Um, there's also like a lot of, I will say, like I'll briefly mention, like uh, sometimes like uh, success comes from unexpected directions. So like. Uh, this was an email I received. Um, what actually happened in this case was someone went in and, and they, they, filed a, they filed a thanks. So uh, in this case, it, it was a woman who uh, filed a report because uh, she was sexually assaulted and she wanted to commend the officer who responded to the complaint. Uh, and so this feedback got along to us because the, the Austin Police Department was able to uh, recognize this person, and the feedback loop for that was much shorter than it would have been otherwise, uh, because we had an easy path where a citizen who wanted to share information could. So she was able to go on there, and she provided lots of detailed information, and they were able to uh, recognize uh, his conduct, which, um, which is great, because that's, I, I, I will say, uh, as part of the process, I think, with police accountability is also being able to incentivize good behavior as well as uh, provide accountability uh, for not as good situations. Um, also, I'll point out that um, while I'm really proud of the work that we did, I feel like that's only really one of the first steps. The work is ongoing for the Office of Police Oversight, and I think that is the role of technology is often we can build tools to help facilitate uh, the social good. Um, but for example, once the form is built, people still need to know that it exists. 
Um, so there's a lot of work that the Office of Police Oversight continues to do to let people know and to also just inform people of their rights in general. Uh, and that's really like, I will say like, that's the hard work. That's the work that I'm like happy to help support. Um, the forum is like a vital tool, but it's nothing without the work of like the community partners who helped inform the process that helped create this forum. Their work is ongoing. The Office of Police Oversight's work is ongoing. Uh, and that is like really what we're trying to support here. Um, also, so briefly thank the Office of Police Oversight, uh, the Office of Design and Delivery, uh, especially my coworker Sarah Rigdon, who wrote a Medium article all about this that I borrowed from extensively, open source for the win. Uh, many, many others uh, who were involved in this process, lots of community stakeholders. Um, and I'd also like to thank all of you. Um, this like project for me is kind of a culmination of many years. So I, I first started attending Shy Hack Night many years ago, and I was interning in an alderman's office and did not know how to code at all. Uh, and so for me, this work is really kind of full circle and that I, I, it's been really uh, a privilege to be able to work on these tools to help these public servants um, and feels really great to be able to say that and to do that. Um, so thanks to everybody and thanks to all of you. And uh, we'll go ahead and do time for questions. Yeah, so I was wondering, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, the, the affidavit thing sounds like completely you know, anachronistic. But at the same time, um, I'm wondering about like just the idea of removing barriers to the point, to the point where it's so easy to do it. Like, um, you know, we saw with like the FCC and net neutrality, a lot of like fake, like fake stuff come through. And especially as you bring anonymity into this, like, what kind of actionable things can they do with this information sure. if, like, it's super easy to post it and there's no like accountability? Yeah. Yeah, so I guess a quick answer to that would be um, that is like a fair point in concern. And the question was sort of if you remove uh, if you remove so many barriers, especially allowing people to submit anonymously, are there concerns about how that might be abused? Um, and the, the quick answer to that is like yes, there were concerns about that, and that was something that we had to address a lot. Um, at the end of the day, for this particular instance, what happens when a complaint is received is the Office of Police Oversight then investigates that complaint. And so based off the information they received, they will choose whether or not to begin an investigation. So like the idea here was, let's make it as easy as possible for them to get as much potential situations to investigate as possible. And they will do the job of uh, investigating each one of them, seeing if they have merit. Um, and it was more important to do that than it was to like potentially like safeguard like uh, like ways in which that might be abused. I mean, at the end of the day, the Office of Police Oversight exists to uh, investigate these complaints, um, and they they were felt perfectly capable of being able to tell like bunk information from legit information. And that might vary if like the tech that we used to build this form is used in a different context, but we built it for them. Uh, so yeah, we weren't we weren't. It's a concern, but it wasn't like a primary, primary problem. What's the user experience like for the person in the Office of Police Accountability? Um, mm -hmm. how, how are they seeing that data and how are they tracking it on their end? Sure, yeah. So the question was like, what's the user experience of the individual who receives the complaint or the really like the people who work at the Office of Police Oversight who receive these complaints? Um, which is a great question. Um, these complaints are sent by email to them. Uh, with basically all the same information that uh, you see if you choose to provide your information. Um, and that was at their request. Uh, that was, uh, I, I know it was a little bit before I started working there, but we, we discussed the possibility of like, how do you want these like in a database somewhere? Email is fine. Email is kind of the lowest common denominator. There's, the volume is not so high that they can't like parse each one of these. Um, and I'm really glad that we asked them that because we could have put a lot of time and effort into like building a back end for them to go into for them to just not want. So, yeah. Can you speak a little bit about your how you recruited users for testing and research? Yes. Um, so that was uh, that was uh, mostly conducted um, by my coworkers Tori and Kristen, both of whom are uh, UX and user researchers, um, and it was kind of a I can speak like 
briefly to, to it. Um, and I think, um, I can't remember, they're planning on writing a Medium post about that process. I don't know if it's out yet or not, but I'd be happy to follow up with you about it. But basically, the idea from the get-go pretty early on was to try to establish uh, places to go conduct those interviews. So some of those were like at Austin Central Library, um, and there was also a lot of reaching out to, there were a lot of, a lot of community stakeholders, activists, um, groups, and grassroots groups that helped like push for this change in the first place. Uh, we then like reached back out to those networks to let people know, to let people know that we were looking for people who are interested to test. Because it is a very hard, it is a very hard thing to find the right kinds of people to test because you're basically asking for someone who has potentially had a negative experience with the police and may or may not have ever reported it to go and like be like grilled about how they feel about doing that. So it was like something that was very delicate that we tried to be very sensitive to. Um, and I can, again, just speaking from my perspective, what I, what I saw was a lot of like uh, focus and importance on finding the right kinds of people to talk to. And there were plenty of times where uh, we, we needed to like uh, put in a little bit more effort to find those people, but I think it was worth it because the kinds of feedback that we got helped inform uh, the form, All right, obviously. Can you talk about more about kind of the, the, the reason behind or like the user research data behind the bank of an officer feature? Uh, so the question is, can I talk a little bit more about the user research behind the thank an officer feature? Um, I think the quick answer to that question is uh, no, I can't really. The URL is down. Uh, can you tell us more about the launch? <laughs> Yes, the URL is down. I was uh, explaining this to Soren. Um, we've had a minor fiasco uh, this week with our domain expiring. Um, <laughs> and, it's, uh, it, it's, and we bought it apparently from a, a subsidiary, a reseller of a, some like German domain management company. I don't know, it's been crazy. So the domain's down. It should be back any day now, I promise. Um, are there any specific questions you'd like me to answer about where I work? <laughs> I just wanted to learn more about the love chicken and the, the pages now. Yeah, cool. I'm very sorry about that. Um, I can slack you the GitHub URL of that website uh, so you can take a look at it. <laughs>